You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min Football. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu. It's the day after the North London derby. I'm delighted, I'm buzzing and I'm doubly delighted to welcome a very special guest back to the show. The brilliant Mr. Jeremy Ali Adier. First of all, how are you, sir? I'm very good. What about you? How are you? Not bad, my friend. Not bad. Can't complain. And and I think, if I'm not mistaken, the last time we spoke was after a North London derby as well. So it, 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 there must be a thing here, Jeremy, uh, <laughs> with the North London derbies. Um, first of all, how pleased were you uh, to see Arsenal turn in a performance like that? And, and what for you were, were the kind of best parts of it? Oh, it was it was amazing. Um, I was at the game, um, and to be honest, uh, I didn't really expect it. We've been waiting a long time for that kind of performance, uh, and to get it in the North London derby, obviously, was uh, very exceptional. Um, you know, it was an amazing, an amazing day. The stadium was buzzing, um, and and yeah, I just I just feel everything just went to plan. You know, you could see from. Uh, from the first minute that the boys were up for it, um, they all worked really hard. You know, the pressing, the intensity, the the desire, everything was there. The passion, and um, and yeah, I just um, I, j- I just feel the first half was probably the best football I've seen Arsenal played under Arteta. Yeah, it was it was incredible, wasn't it? And and you mentioned all of all of those things: intensity, you know, work rate, effort. But the the technical kind of side of it was there as well, wasn't it? They were picking out key passes at key moments, making sure they executed them properly. One of the things that really stood out to me was how quickly, when we did win the ball back on the transition, everybody kind of flooded towards the penalty area. Smith Rowe, Saka, uh, Aubameyang looked like a man possessed yesterday. I mean. How good was he for you? Because you've played in that position and you know exactly what it takes uh, to succeed at that level. What did you make of Aubameyang's performance? I thought he was incredible. Yeah, he was. He was. He was superb. I think his 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 attitude as well, his body language. You, you could see was up for it. You could see the desire. How, you know, hungry he was for, for for to get that goal, and and how hungry he was to go and press. I've never seen him. I think work so hard on pressing. You know, even knowing he was probably not going to get the ball, but it, it, that just set an example for the rest of your teammate. When you see your striker going and run like this and going press in every position, you're beyond. You just got to follow. You know, and, and that was a, a great example of of a fighting spirit and passion, and and that's how you get the fan going as well. You know, the fan. That's what they want to see. They just want to see fighting, passion, desire, and 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 then you just get the stadium going and. The, the people following and then he just end up being a, being a fantastic atmosphere and, and a great game to watch. It was indeed. And before we come on to talk about a few more individual performances, I've been at all the home games this season. And one of the things I was worried about going into them was that given the way Arsenal started the campaign at Brentford, that there would be a little bit of negativity in and amongst the crowd. We see it on social media all the time. And I felt as though it might be one of those situations where at the first sign of trouble, the fans maybe turn a little bit because they're not happy with what's happened, let's say, over the last 18 months. But how how surprised have you been by how positive the atmosphere seems to be and how behind the team that this set of supporters seems to be at the minute? Yeah, no, definitely. I've been, you know, I've been to all the games and, and do commentary on all the games with the Arsenal media. So, so I've, I was a bit like you. I was a bit worried uh, getting back to the Emirates after losing... Uh, the first game to Brentford, I just, I just thought, oh, God, I'm not sure how the fans going to react. You know, after last season as well, where we had no fan in the stadium, the the result and the season wasn't good. Um, so I just thought, I'm, I'm not sure how they're going to take it, how they're going to react. And and I must say that Chelsea game, uh, first game at home, 
I was I was surprised. I was kind of react like thinking, mm, you know, I was completely wrong. You know, I was thinking the fan will will be up there turning against uh, against Mikel Arteta, and actually, no, they were there to support the team and 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 really try to to lift the team up and be there for the players and the manager. So so I'm, yeah, I'm 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 happy to see that because in this day and age, as you know, Rizzo you know that's that's the only thing that matters and you haven't got time you don't get time to to install thing and and to you know and, and to get your your stamp on the team and I, and I just think the fans have been really understanding and, and really pa- patient with with Mikel and then hopefully after what we've seen yesterday it's, it's a start of, of something good yeah for sure and and just taking it back to yesterday's game specifically one of the big calls that Mikel Arteta had to make in the lead up to the fixture was whether or not to bring Granit Xhaka back into the starting lineup. Now, I think a lot of us felt he would do it because he's shown a lot of trust in the player throughout his tenure at the club. Were you personally surprised, though, to see him get given the nod and thrown back in for a game of this magnitude, given kind of the reasons he missed the last three games, which was from a a silly tackle at Manchester City? Um, I wasn't surprised. I just think, you know, we've... We've seen in the last what eighteen months, I will say that that Mikel uh, uh, have you know Shaka in his plan. He's, he's one of the first name on the team sheet every time he's fit. He always starts. So I knew he was going to start. I just you know obviously was more thinking who who's going to come out of the team, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I was not surprised at all seeing him getting back into the team. Um, and I think he's, you know, he's had a great game. He played really well. Uh, sad to see him coming off uh, on the injury, and I really hope he won't be a, he won't be a bad one because he did look, he did look like he, he might have twisted his knee. So um, you know, I wish him, you know, obviously the the best, and and hope that it's not too serious. Yeah, for sure, that goes without saying. And it did. The, the thing with Granite Xhaka is he's he's so good at staying fit. You know, that's one of his best qualities is the way he looks after himself and his conditioning. And so to see him pick up an injury like that in a really unlucky manner uh, is obviously disappointing. And as you say, fingers crossed, it's not long term. Uh, taking it back to for, right from the beginning of the team, Aaron Ramsdale has, has come in as the Arsenal goalkeeper. And for me, he's really impressed. He's brought some personality and some character to the position that... I don't want to be too critical, but I don't really feel like Bern Leno brings. What have you made of Aaron Ramsdale so far? And, and does he deserve to be the number one now moving forward? Yeah, totally. Totally deserve to be number one. I think when he, he got brought to the club, uh was not to be on the bench. It was to be a fair uh, competition with Bert Leno. Um, I'm I'm a bit the same as you. I, I don't want to criticise Bert Leno, but I just think Ramsdale give that character you know, he's, he's more vocal. I think the, the, the defenders and, and the players around him listen to him. He, he gives something different. Um, I think his first game, obviously, he might have not been used to use his feet as much. Um, you know, where he was playing before, they were not probably a team that uh, played a lot from the back. So I think he had to kind of get used to that. Uh, but I feel he's getting better each game. Every time I see him, he gets better and better. And... Uh, and I think, obviously, as a shot stopper, he's been fantastic. You know, when you see that save uh, in the last yeah. few minutes of the game yesterday, you know, he had to make that save. If, if that if that ended up being a goal, we've got three minutes of hell at the end where we would have all been, you know, uh, scared of, of, of conceding again. So I think he's, um, yeah, no, he's been, he's been great. And, and at the moment, I think he's, he's deserved to be number one. And, and I'm sure Bert Leno will understand that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, moving into the defence, obviously Ben White has come in for big, big money in the summer. Uh, struggled a little bit at Brentford uh, in the first game of the season due to the kind of physicality. I worried that that was going to be the case at Burnley as well due to the way they play. I thought he came through the Burnley game quite well apart from a couple of odd moments, but I thought yesterday he looked really comfortable. And are we starting to see a really good partnership forming between him and Gabriel? Yes, no, I totally agree. Um, now, the only thing I, I just wish is them to keep fit. 
Mm. Uh, because I think, like you said, they're, they're really creating a partnership. They're very, very compatible together. You know, Ben Wise really reading the game well, covering up, and then and then Gabriel, I think he's back to his best. He's he's been you know on the man, uh, so tough and and very strong. Um, and I think that's maybe what Ben White needed. You know, at the beginning of the season, Gabriel wasn't there. Um, and, and now that he is there, I think them two are, are just creating a fantastic partnership. And, and I hope they will both keep fit because I think that is the spine of the team. You know, when you've got your goalkeeper and your two centre-back on form, defending well, training every day, creating that, that partnership, then, then the rest kind of follow. So, um, so yeah, I've been well impressed. And obviously, you know, we always talk uh, about price tag and, and 50 million it is a lot of money. Uh, but he's, he's a young player and, and he will he will make mistakes. He will learn from them and then he will get better and better. And I, and I think with what we've seen, you know, yesterday and, and the, the last couple of games, I think I think we've got a great player in the club. Um, and then, you know, like I said, hopefully we'll keep fit because that's, that's a major thing for us. You know, we've been the team so far this year that have used the most player. Mm. Uh, you know, obviously COVID related as well, that doesn't help. Um, but I think... Now that we've we've got that structure and that that defensive side sorted, um, I think you know, fingers crossed, we can we can keep that going. And and just finally on the defense, Takahiro Tomiyasu has come in, and he was a bit of an unknown quantity to a lot of Arsenal fans, I would say. Uh, question marks about how quickly he would adapt from Serie A, which is a very different style of football to the Premier League. I think he's taken like a duck to water, and and how impressed have you been by him? Uh, I, Fantastic! I can't. I can't even tell you how impressed I've been uh, with him. You know, I, I'd never seen him play before, and uh, when we signed him, I just didn't know much about him. And I thought, oh, is that really the player that is going to make the team an improvement in the team? Uh, but as soon as I saw him against Norwich, you know, going forward, uh, and I thought, wow, we've got a good player there going forward. Let's see if he can defend. And then uh, game against Burnley, completely different. Defending, 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 really focused on that. And that's what I like because at the end of the day, for me, a defender has got to be there to defend first. You know, it doesn't matter if you're left back or right back. You know, you're a defender and and that is your your first job. That's what you've got to do first is, is be there to defend. After whatever game it is, if you get the, if you get the space and, and you can go and and help going forward and, and helping the forward player, then that's a plus, you know, and obviously he can do both and he's clever enough to, to know when to do both. And that's a, that's a gift, you know, I just think he's settled in the team so well. Uh, for me, he was one of the man of the match yesterday, definitely. And, um, and, and I hope he carries on this way. Yeah, for sure. Kept Son quiet, who was one of Spurs' danger men. And I actually thought, and I, I don't know if you agree, Jeremy, I think, there was a couple of times yesterday where actually he had to deal with Son and he didn't really get the support from Bukayo Saka. And this is not me digging out Bukayo Saka, but I think we've seen it a couple of times this season. We saw it twice in the Chelsea game, actually, where he probably needs to drop that little bit deeper to, to help prevent the opponents creating the overload on that side. I, I thought he left a lot of it to Tommy Yasu yesterday, but his athleticism got him through it. Yeah, no, definitely. After, is he, is he something that maybe he knows already that he doesn't really need much help because I just, like I said, you know, compared to the other side where Kieran Tierney, you know, we know how, how he loves to go forward, go forward and, and, and really enjoy on the, on the forward play. So maybe on that side, Saka knows he's got a defensive job a little bit more important to do. Playing on the right in front of Tomiyasu, uh, you know, if I was playing there, from what I've seen so far, I'd be like, this guy can can do everything on his own. He doesn't really need me. I'll just be there to to help sometimes when I can. But really, I want to focus on the on going forward because, uh, you know, every he's got everything. The, how strong he is in the air as well. Every time the ball is in the air, he, he's there. He's jumping higher than everybody else. He's taking it. He's... I can't tell you how impressed I've been, you know, with, with him. And and maybe that's why Saka just for, you know, yesterday didn't really need much of, of his help, I guess. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and perhaps it is an instruction uh, from the boss as well to, to kind of say to Saka, 
be there ready for the transition rather than getting yourself all the way back I don't know um, and I'll be interested to keep an eye on that as the season moves on and if that changes for different opponents or different game plans etc etc I wanted to talk a little bit Jeremy about Thomas Partey because he was brought into the club for big money didn't really hit the ground running largely due to injuries you know I think he missed 14 Premier League games last season and I thought that yesterday if you were looking for a performance from Thomas Partey that shows you exactly what we've been missing that was it he was sensational wasn't he yeah he was uh, it was amazing i think he's the he's a massive key to our success i think if if we if he keeps fit if we keep him in that environment in that team playing like this i think we've got a serious player there i think he will you know he will be the key to to us you know getting back up that that table and 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 why not finish in the top 4 i think he's a you know the way he breaks up the play is passing as well, and that's what a lot of people might think. Yeah, he's only there to break up the play and, and and you know defensive side, but he's got a vision. The passes that cuts through, you know, between the between the midfield and 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 the forward play is it's just amazing, you know. And um, and the way he gets back to help his defenders as well, you know, as soon as he sees the balls wide, you, you can see he gets back, um, gets back as a kind of third uh, centre back, if you want, you know, because obviously he's he's a big guy, you know, he's he's good in the air, and and why not bringing him back when we need to, you know, when the ball, when we kind of suffering a little bit, a lot of crossing in the box, then then he's there to help, and um, yeah, I think yesterday was uh, yeah, it was amazing. Brilliant, wasn't he? Um, moving on to the forward line, we've talked about Aubameyang already. And, and for me, one of my big concerns going into this season was I love Saka. I love Emil Smith-Rowe. I think they're fantastic players. But I wondered whether or not they could turn the potential that they show and the great build-up play that they always produce into actual goals and assists. Because I feel like their outputs have just been a little bit below, if you look back at last season, what they probably should have been in terms of the positions they were getting themselves into, the chances that they were creating, etc. Um, yesterday, they both delivered a goal and an assist each. Are you confident that those two can, throughout the course of the season, do enough to fire Arsenal into a European place again? Or do you still think that there's maybe a little bit of a question mark there and that Nicola Pepe is going to be needed to kind of really help boost those numbers up yeah i think i think we're going to need everybody i think mm. we can't just you know people got to remember they're very they're young players uh and i would say saka probably got a bit more experience than emil um but you know we've got to remember emil smith for six six months ago we're nowhere near the first team. Then so good, mm. suddenly he gets his chance, he took it, and now he's the number ten at Arsenal Football Club. Do you know what I mean? So we, we've got to, we've got to look after him. We've got to love him. We've got to give him that that you know whatever he needs to carry on performing. And we've got to understand as well that there's gonna be a game where he doesn't perform, and and because he's still learning, he's still very young. Um, so I think we you know to go back to to what you, you asked me, I think we're gonna need. Nicola Pepe, we're gonna need everybody to, to 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 be there. I don't think we can just think, you know, with um, Smith Rowe and, and Saka. That's it. From what we've seen yesterday, we we're gonna expect them to to perform like this every weekend. We do, and that'd be fantastic if they do, you know. But I think we, you know we've got a, we've got a look at we've got Odegaard, Pepe, um, there to to do the job as well. And and I think some days. You know, we 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 might not see Emil Smith or Saka performing as well as as they did yesterday, and and it won't be the same game. You know, and and that's yeah. why I think we we definitely need to 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 be exciting about it because I think what they've proved not just yesterday, but you know, since they've started playing, we've got two fantastic talent there, uh, but we've just got to be a little bit patient with them. For sure, a, a few other players that I wanted to get your thoughts on, and and. I guess this is one that I think you could probably relate to quite well. Um, Alexander Lacazette is a player who has, I thought, at various points last season, performed really, really well. I thought he linked up the play between the the, the rest of the attackers and, and the front line very, very well. He's now found himself in a place where Aubameyang's moved back into that centre-forward position. It doesn't look like Mikel's going to be shoehorning him in on the left-hand side anymore. And, and now Lacazette is in a place where his contract is coming towards an end. Um, he's 
probably not a starter now. How difficult would it be as someone at the football club who, because I'm sure at some point in your career, your future was uncertain at Arsenal. You didn't know if you wanted to stay or go. Is it is it easy to put that out of your mind and just focus on performing or does it kind of linger there and play a part? Oh, no, it's, it, it, it's there. It's in your mind. It doesn't go away. Um, and, and in particular for him, because like you just said, his contract runs at the end of the season, which that is a massive part, right? Because when you still have two, three, four years of contract, you know that whatever happened, you, you get injured or, or whatever happened, you, you still got your contract, you're still at the club. Uh, in in uh, Alex's situation, obviously he doesn't play or doesn't start. Um, his contract runs out at the end of the season. I'm not sure if he had a conversation with the with the club already about you know getting new contract or or if he's already told them that he would like to move on. Um, but obviously it is difficult, you know. And and I'm a big fan of Lacazette. I think he's a fantastic player, and I think as much as I'm happy seeing Aubameyang in one position now and doesn't get, you know, one weekend on the left, one on the right, one up front, because I think a striker, you just want to play up front, you want to score goals. This is where you're the best and, and I think that's where his best position is. Um, but obviously, I'm sad not to see Lacazette play because I think he's, he's good enough to be in that team and I think he brings something different to the team. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's all about the balance of the team and, and if the Mikel judge that the system that Arsenal plays at the moment and, and Aubameyang has to be as the number one striker, then he's got no chance. He's got to sacrifice somebody. Um, obviously, with, with Lacazette, that's, that's how it is. But it must be hard for him because, you know, I've been in a situation where you're on the bench most of the time and you don't really get, get any time on the pitch to prove what you can do and to and to show what you know how good you are uh and and yeah he plays on your mind and then you know you work all week uh, and then you're not coming on at the weekend it's, it's not an easy situation to be in but he's a great professional you know i saw him yesterday after the game and mm. and i had a quick chat with him and, and he's just you know motivated as ever to just you know give everything he's got to to the club because he, he loves the club and he's and he's obviously wants to start, you know, because that's what we, ex-player, player, that's what we always wanted, right? It's just, it's just to play football and express ourselves on the pitch. So, um, so uh, I don't know how it's going to go for him, but I wish him, you know, I wish him all the best, whatever, whatever happened. And, and hopefully I would like to see him stay a few more seasons at the club. Yeah, and, and he's a player that for me, you know, in years gone by, I've, I've as an Arsenal fan, I've sat here and gone, We've done this too often. We've allowed players to get to the final year of their contract without making a decision on them one way or the other. And we've ended up in a situation where we, we see them walk away and we're not able to get a transfer fee in that, that we can reinvest back in the squad. But with Lacazette, I don't feel that way because I feel like the attitude is right from Lacazette. I think that really comes across in the way he plays, that he's committed, that he cares. And, and so I think I'm less kind of concerned about this situation. I think if things go well this season and he does contribute and he feels happy, I do think there is still a possibility that Arsenal could give him an extension. Equally, if he was to leave, I'd wish him obviously all the best because I've never questioned his commitment to the cause the way we might have done with players in years gone by. So, um, yeah, I completely agree with you. And uh, interesting, I saw in your social media you uh, had a chat with the king as well, Mr Thierry Henry himself. Uh, it was great to see him um, see him uh, back at the Emirates Stadium as well. With Daniel Ek, interestingly, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any exclusive there for us? <laughs> uh, sorry, I've, I haven't got any, mate. If I had, I will be, uh, I will be telling you, but I've, I haven't got any clue, mate. You know, it's above me, this. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just you kidding. Know, uh, but yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to see you know, ex-player or people that love the club uh, to come and support the team and, and really care for the club and and really are behind the manager, behind the team and, and just wish all the best to the club. That's that's all we, you know, we're all Arsenal fans at the end of the day and we just want to see the club back where you belong, which is, you know, at the top of the table. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just one final individual player I wanted to get your thoughts on before I ask you a little bit about the, the process, if you like. Uh, is is Gabriel Martinelli. Now, I know he didn't feature yesterday. He got an opportunity to play against Wimbledon the other day. And obviously, we have to bear in mind that he's coming back. 
he's still coming back. I think he's still not at 100% after that horrendous knee injury that he suffered. He's a young player. And again, the reason I'm asking you, Jeremy, is because you've been in this position. You know, you've been a young player at Arsenal trying to kind of break through. For you, I think it was a lot more difficult because you had <laughs> some incredible players to compete with. Um, but where are you on the Gabriel Martinelli thing? Because I think Wimbledon was a big opportunity for him. And I, I just feel the last few times when he's got those opportunities, he hasn't necessarily grabbed them with both hands. And I'm starting to worry about him a little bit. What's your take on the Brazilian? Well, I feel it's, 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 it's disappointing to see because I just feel when he, you know, when he was at the top of his form, he was a fantastic talent, a great player. We all thought that he was going to be the, the next big thing coming through. And, and obviously that bad injury... Uh, doesn't help, uh, and then being in that situation, I know exactly how he feel. You know, he feels frustrated because he knows how good he can be and and what he can bring to the team. But at the same time, he understand as well that the players that are ahead of him now are performing and are doing well. So I think it's more frustration with with himself because. I think, like you said, you know, you come back from a bad injury. It takes time to get back to to your top level, and um, and he wants to play because that's what he wants to do, like every every other player. But he knows that he's not quite there yet. He's not at his best, and and that's what gets frustrated because you want your brain is there telling you, I want to play. I should be playing. I know what I can do. But then when you do play, or when you when you get the opportunity, then, then you kind of realise that you're not quite there yet. And, um, and and hopefully we'll carry on, you know, focusing on, on that. And then when he gets when he gets that opportunity to, to you know, to play, uh, to, to just take it, that's how it works. You know, unfortunately, when you're out of the team, then somebody else takes your position and, and you're back to kind of square one and you've got to prove again how good you are and, and, and to show every single day training that you're good enough to, to get that first 11 start. It must be quite difficult, isn't it, to, to keep or maintain those confidence levels when, like you said, you feel that you're ready and you come into the team and then your performance is maybe not necessarily bad, but not at the level where you've convinced or, or given the manager something to think about. To then kind of have those peaks where you really believe in yourself and then to have to deal with the come downs after that each time, it must be quite challenging mentally. Yeah, oh, massively, you know, massively challenging, you know, and obviously we, we know how good he is. We know what he's capable of doing. But when you don't see it, you kind of think, oh, right, OK, next game, next game and then injuries and and then it's a, just a visual circle because, like I say, your brain's telling you that you're, you know, that you're good enough and that you should be playing and you get frustrated because you don't play. But then when you get that that opportunity, because you kind of wind up in your own self frustrated, you don't end up performing as well. And then you just think, oh God, I had a chance and you realise it too late. He said, oh, I had a chance there. If my mind was more focused on that, on taking that chance when he comes around and not uh, getting too frustrated by the lack of, of games, then, then obviously you would have took that chance and, and show people how good you are. And it's just a, a constant battle mentally to to really try to keep a clear mind and a focused mind on what you want to achieve. And, and that's, that's not easy to do. It's very difficult. For sure, for sure. And just finally, Jeremy, before I let you go, I wanted to get your thoughts on, if you like, the process, as, as Mikel Arteta calls it, the fans have kind of latched onto that as a bit of a buzzword and use it quite often. But... I think we can all see that there is a process, OK? We, we, we've turned over a lot of players. We've brought a lot of new players in. We've had all sorts of issues relating to COVID, relating to injuries, relating to other circumstances that have been out of Mikel Arteta's control. I'm in a place where I'm not sure that it's going to work, but I'm also still willing to give him the time to, to really have a go at it and for us to make that judgment. Where are you on the whole process thing have you got to the point of frustration yet or are you still kind of looking from the outside and thinking this could work you know and this could be the start of a great thing yeah no i'm i'm, I'm like that I'm, i really you know i've i've learned during my career to to try to take more time uh to set the situation to assess the situation because you know, a good player doesn't become bad in a week or two weeks, you know. Right. And when you look on papers, the talent and, and the players we've got in that squad, you know, we should we should be up there, 
do you know what I mean? I think, I think you know, a lot of people know that. It's just trying to get it get it to work and get them players to perform at the best of their ability. And that's where the manager got his job to do. That's what you've got to do. Is is obviously you pick up your, your first eleven, but then when you've got a top player on your hand, whatever you've got to do to make him perform, that is what your job is. That is what you've got to do. Um, and and that's why I'm I'm willing to I'm definitely willing to, to you know to still believe that Mikel is going to be a success and the team's going to turn it around. I was, you know, like everybody else, very disappointed about last season and not not getting to Europe because I think you know European football is 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 great. But at the same time, I thought maybe maybe it was a good thing not to be in Europe so we can really focus on the Premier League and 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 you know I know our rotation. Uh, these day and age work in clubs where you know it seems that player can't really play two three games a week so maybe the fact that there's no Europe he might might be able to set really get his start in 11 mm. and then really work hard and keep that kind of same setup and same start in 11 week in week out I just think we need stability in the team um, and you know when you see that with the player the, the, the team sorry that views the most players so far this season, Kinds of make me think. I know there's been COVID and injuries, but you can't keep just using, you know, changing the teams week in week out, and, and it's very difficult for player to to understand what's going on, you know, because you know as a player, if you feel you you've done well, then you should be playing again the weekend after, right? You can't just keep changing yeah. and swapping system and so. I think you need to find what's the best, what's your best team, what's your best player, whatever position, and just work on it. Um, so yeah, I really, you know, after what I've seen yesterday, it gave me a lot of hope. Um, and and I must say that this season, you know, it didn't start very well, but I think now we've turned the corner. Um, you know, them Norwich and Burnley's game were not pretty game to watch. We didn't perform as good as we could, but we got the result, and and we'll be that will be forgotten. When when you're at the top of the table or in the top four, nobody will remember that. Oh, yeah, we didn't perform at Burnley. No, yeah. people will think that's three points. You know, people will remember that great performance yesterday in the North London derby. So, you know, I'm I'm definitely optimistic and 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 really think that the club is going in the right direction. Fingers crossed you're right, my friend. Fingers crossed you're right, because it's been a, a painful couple of years as an Arsenal supporter. So uh, really, uh, for me, the, the thing with this team as well is there's so many young players, likeable players, you know, as as the chant goes, you know, they're our, they're our own. And, and that obviously really helps, I think, in, in buying into a, a project if you have that connection. And I think for the first time in, in maybe a few seasons now, I look at that team and I do feel a connection to certain players and I do feel that they can, you know, take us hopefully in the longer term, hopefully in the shorter term, in fact, uh, to where we need to be. But Jeremy, thank you uh, so, so much for joining me as always. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, so thank you for taking the time out of your day because I can imagine you're very busy uh, off the back of that performance yesterday. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's always a pleasure anytime, you know. Talking about Arsenal is, uh, is is my life, you know. Like I said, I've spent a few years at the club, and and I just you know love that club and want to see uh, see that club succeed again. So um, so yeah, anytime, mate. Thank you, mate. Really, really appreciate it. We'll be back very soon with more Arsenal related content. Until then, take care of yourselves and stay safe. Ciao. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.